This is the first in a series of videos on factoring quadratics. Now, quadratics is a term that is used to describe a second order polynomial, where the highest exponent for our variable is 2. We're going to be referencing quadratics in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and b are coefficients for x squared and x respectively, and c is a constant. There are three different approaches we're going to examine for factoring quadratics. First, we have the difference of squares approach. Second, a general approach for factoring simple quadratics. And third, using the quadratic formula. In this first video, we are going to examine the difference of squares approach. We use the difference of squares approach when we have an expression that is a difference of squares. Let's take the expression x squared minus 9. Here we have the first term, x squared, which is really x squared. And the second term, 9, is really 3 squared. So we've got two terms squared, and we're taking the difference between them, indicated by subtraction. Whenever we see this pattern, the expression can be factored into two terms. In each set of brackets here, the first term is going to be the square root of the first term we have here. So in this case, the square root of x squared is x. So that's going to be the first term in each of these brackets. And the second term is going to be the square root of the second term we have here, 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. Now between the x and the 3 in each of these brackets, in one of them I'm going to put a plus, and in the other one, I'm going to put a minus, so that I get x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then you're done. So to summarize the approach for the difference of squares, if you have the expression in the form of, uh, let's try some new letters here, maybe p squared minus r squared, it can be factored into two terms, one with addition and one with subtraction, the first term in each of these brackets is going to be the square root of p squared, which will be p, and the second term is going to be the square root of r squared, which will be r. And that's the general form for factorizing a difference of squares. Now I can always perform a check on my factorization approach by multiplying out the brackets, what we often refer to as foiling an equation. So I have x times x giving me x squared, and x times minus 3 giving me negative 3x. I have 3 times x giving me positive 3x, and 3 times negative 3 giving me negative 9. Now I collect the like terms, and I have 1x squared. I have negative 3x plus 3x, leaving me with 0 3x, so those two cancel each other out. And then I'm just left with negative 9. And we can see that this is the same as the equation that we started with, Indeed, this does check out. Now to illustrate the benefits of factorizing, why don't we try to graph this equation? Let's first write it in the form of y is equal to x squared minus 9. And here we have the graph of it. It's in a classic U shape. And here's our x-axis, and here's our y-axis. We are often interested in knowing where this graph crosses this x-axis, where y is equal to 0. Imagine, if you would, if you were graphing profit. Where you cross the x-axis, you'd be shifting from having positive money, a profit, to negative money, a loss, and vice versa. Here you'd be shifting from a loss to a profit. So you really want to know where these x-intercepts are. To determine this, let's write this in factored form. We have x plus 3 times x minus 3. And we want to know when y is equal to 0, as that's when we cross the x-axis. Well, we have two terms that are being multiplied. And we know that when you multiply by 0, you get 0. So if one of these terms is equal to 0, we'll be crossing that x-axis, that y will be equal to 0. And this is pretty easy to determine at this point. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, that happens when x is equal to negative 3. x minus 3 is equal to 0. Well, that happens when x is equal to plus 3. And now we have the locations for these x-intercepts and really for any expression that we're going to be able to factor in the form of x plus a times x plus b 
is going to have some intercept that we will be able to solve for by determining when, at what values x is equal to 0. But enough on graphing for now. You'll get more into that later in the course. Let's do some more examples for how to factor differences of squares. Okay, so let's try to factor the following expression. I've got 80x minus 5x cubed. Now before we go too deep into factoring here, let's do the most basic element of factoring first, and that's pulling out the greatest common factor. So looking at this term, is there a greatest common factor? Well, I see that there's 5 that can be divided into both terms, and I have an x and I have an x cubed, so the lowest order value would be x to the power of 1 can also be divided into each term. So I have the greatest common factor of 5x. Let's take that out of the expression first. So as we factor 5x out of the expression, we have 80x divided by x, so our x's cancel each other out. I'm left with 80 divided by 5, which gives me 16 minus I have 5 divided by 5, those cancel each other out, and I have x cubed divided by x squared, which leaves me with x squared. Now that I've factored out the greatest common factor, let's try to factor this further. I have 16, which is 4 squared, and I have x squared, which is x squared. So indeed, I have the difference between two squares. I can factor that further, so I'm going to leave that factor that I've already pulled out there, but now I'm going to do my difference of squares, plus and minus. I have the square root of 16 for my first term in each of these brackets, 4, and I have the square root of x squared, which is x, as the second term in each of these brackets. And that's my final answer. Let's try another one. 12x squared minus 24. So once again, let's first see if there's a greatest common factor between the two terms. Um, both terms are divisible by 12. And that's pretty much it. That's my greatest common factor. So now I have 12 times, I have 12x squared divided by 12. The 12s cancel each other out. Left with x squared minus 24 divided by 12. That leaves me with 2. Now let's see if we can factor this further. I have x squared squared, which is really x squared, minus, so I have a difference, and then 2. And while it may not be obvious that this is a square, it really is the square of the root of 2. So we can consider it um, as the square of root 2. So indeed, the difference of squares will apply. So then I have 12 times, and now I have my two sets of brackets here, one with a plus, one with a minus. And for the first term, I have the square root of x squared, which is x. And for the second term, I have the square root of 2, which is going to be written exactly as such, the square root of 2. And that's my final answer. Let's try another one. Here we have 4x to the power of 5 minus xy squared. First, let's look for the greatest common factor. So with each term, the only common factor I see is x, and really it's x to the power of 1. So that's our greatest common factor. So factoring that out of the equation, I have 4x to the power of 5 uh, divided by x. So this goes into my x to the power of 5, leaving me with 4x's. So I have 4x to the power of 4 left. And then the x's in the second term cancel each other out. So I'm left with negative y squared. Now let's see if we can factor this 4x to the power of 4 minus y squared. Let's try the difference of squares. So 4x to the power of 4. Does that have a square root? We haven't dealt with anything like this. The strategy for this is to look at this number 4 and look at what is the square root for that. Well, it's 2. And what is the square root for x to the power of 4? Well, it's x squared. And so 2x squared, all squared, becomes 4x to the power of 4. 
Now, if that doesn't seem intuitive to you, let's think of it this way. A square is really multiplying something by itself. So I have 2x squared times 2x squared is really what 2x squared squared is. Now, the commutative rule of multiplication says order of multiplication doesn't matter. So this is really the same as saying 2 times 2 times x squared times x squared. And this is really x times x for 1x squared times x times x. So really what we're left with when we uh, multiply the two twos, we get 4. And when we multiply these x's, we have x to the power of 4. So this is the same as what we have here. For the other term, y squared, it's fairly obvious that this is the square of y. And indeed, we're dealing with a difference between these two terms, so we're dealing with a difference of squares. Now, this is also the first example where we have two different variables, but that's not a problem. The difference of squares still applies. So now let's do the factorization of the difference of squares so that I have a plus and a minus. And of course, I haven't forgotten my greatest common factor from before. So for the first term, I'm going to have the square root of 4x to the power of 4, which is 2x squared. And for the second term, I'm going to have the square root of y squared, which is y. And while some may choose to factor this further, um, this is good enough by my standards, so I'm going to leave it there. Now we have one last problem, which is x squared plus 64. Now, in this problem, there is no greatest common factor, so we're going to skip that step. Um, what we've got here is we've got x squared, the square root of that is x, and 64, the square root of that is 8. But in this example, we have the addition of squares, not the difference of squares. Now, it might be tempting, and I have seen my students try this before, to factor this as x plus 8 times x plus 8. And because I've seen this mistake often enough, I'm going to uh, foil it out and show you guys why this indeed does not work. If I were to do this, I would have x squared plus 8x, and here I'd have 8x, and then I would multiply that 8 times 8 and get 64. If I collect my like terms, I get x squared plus, I have two 8x's, being x plus that 64. So I think you can see that these are not the same. We have an additional 16x in this expression. So this does not work. Indeed, this expression cannot be factored. Now let's use a graph of this expression to help illustrate this. If I were to graph y is equal to x squared plus 64, our expression, this would be our y-axis, and this would be my x-axis. Now, earlier in this video, we talked about how when we factor an expression to be x plus a times x plus b, we can determine the x values for which these factor terms are 0, and thereby find the x-intercept, where y is equal to 0. As we can see in this graph, this expression never has a value of 0, as x squared is always a positive value by the nature of squares, and 64 is a positive value, we will always have a value that is 0 or more, or in this case, 64 or higher. Thus, we cannot factor these terms into the simplistic form of x plus a times x plus b, because those would always give us a solution where we would get a zero value. So really, whenever you run into an expression of p squared plus r squared, it cannot be factored. That concludes our videos on difference of squares. The next video is how to factor simple quadratic expressions.